We're now going to state the extreme value theorem for functions of two variables. So the theorem says the following. Let f be a continuous function on a domain d in R2. Now, remember the extreme value theorem for functions of one variable says that if I have a continuous function on a closed interval, then it has a global minimum and a global maximum. So here we have a continuous function, but now what is the analog of a closed interval in this context? So what we need to assume is that d is closed and bounded. I'll tell you in a minute what those terms mean. So then f has a global minimum and a global maximum on d. So let me first explain bounded because that's a little simpler. So bounded means, well roughly speaking, it means that the domain D cannot go out to infinity. And the precise statement is that there exists some real number R such that D is contained in the disk of radius r centered at the origin. In other words, if you, can, if you draw a sufficiently big circle, then it will surround the entire domain. An equivalent statement is that there's some upper bound on the absolute values of the x and y coordinates of all points in d. Now closed is a little more subtle, and I'm just going to give you a rough statement in words. So closed means roughly that D contains all of its boundary points. Uh, so for example, Suppose D is the set of points x, y, such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So this is the closed unit disk. That's what it's called. And this is closed. Why? Well, if we look at the picture, So the boundary of the closed unit disk is the unit circle, where x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And the unit circle is contained in D, because we're allowing less than or equal here. Okay. Now, if instead we take D to be the set of x, y, such that x squared plus y squared is strictly less than 1, and this is called the open unit disk, This is not closed. So the boundary of the open unit disk is also the unit circle where x squared plus y squared equals 1. But D does not contain all of those points. In fact, it doesn't contain any of those points. And so it's not closed. Now to see why the assumption closed is needed in the extreme value theorem, let's look at the function f of xy equals x. So this function has no global maximum or global minimum on the open unit disk. Why not? Well, what's the largest possible value of f on the unit disk? It's 1, which is attained at the point 1, 0, and no other point. 
so the maximum wants to be 1. But in the open unit disk, we have removed the point 1, comma 0. It's not there anymore. So f does not attain the value of 1. It contains, it attains values slightly less than 1 and arbitrarily close. For example, you could take, you know, the point, point 0.999999, comma 0, where f is point 0.999999. But for any point like this, you can make f a little bigger with another point in the open unit disk, like we could just add a digit, 9999999999, or some more digits, we can always get closer to 1 without ever getting there. So on the closed unit disk, 1 is the largest value of f, but there does not exist any second place largest value. So once we, once we remove the point 1, 0, there's no global maximum. And likewise, there's no global minimum, because the minimum wants to be minus 1, but the point minus 1, comma 0 is not in the open unit disk. Okay? Um, in general, if you write as the domain D as a set of points satisfying some inequalities where you have less than or equal signs or greater than or equal signs and the functions involved are continuous, then you'll get a closed set. If you have strict inequalities like less than or greater than, then you're likely to not get a closed set.